Rogers Radio Show. Yes, folks, it's the Roy Rogers Radio Show for the whole family. Adventure, suspense, mystery, and music. Starring Roy Rogers, King of the Cowboys, and Dale Evans, Queen of the West, with Pat Brady, the Mellow Man, and an all-star cast. And now, here to greet you with a song and a story are Roy and Dale. Oh, good evening, folks. Greetings again to the whole family. It's really a shame that every American can't visit the nation's capital city. Somehow, seeing the government buildings where our laws are made and the memorial statues honoring some of our greatest Americans, well, it does something to you. It gives you a feeling of pride and makes you glad to be an American citizen. A while back, Gail and Pat and I went to Washington for a personal appearance, and while we were there, a very strange thing happened. Pat and I were in our hotel room waiting for Dale so we could go sightseeing, and... Well, I don't know why we have to go sightseeing. I can see practically the whole city from here with these binoculars. It sure is a good view, isn't it? Well, I'll say. Hey, Roy, see those two reddish-brown towers over there? Where? Oh. Yeah? I bet you don't know what that is. Okay, what is it? That's the, uh, um, Smith Zunium. Or the Zunium. <laughs> you mean the Smithsonian Institute? <laughs> yeah, that's what it is. That's all right here in this guidebook. And you know what? What? They got every American stamp that was ever printed over there. Well, boy, I sure want to see that. You, you know I'm a, a fool lateness, or a field tattletale, or um, I collect stamps. <laughs> Since when? Since Christmas. <laughs> I got a book of them for a present. Come in. Hi, Roy. Uh -huh. Pat. Hi. All set? Yep, ready to go. Oh, say, this package was in your mailbox downstairs in the lobby. What is it? It's wrapped like a book. Open it up, will you, Pat? Sure. Well, what should we take in today? Well, I want to see the Washington Monument and the Lincoln Memorial and the... Roy? Yes? These, these stamps on the package. What about them? They're eight cents Statue of Liberty. So? Yeah, but look at the statue. It's upside down. Something I can show you in the way of our stamp. Uh, uh, aren't you Roy Rogers? Uh, yes, sir. Well, this is a real pleasure, Mr. Rogers. Well, thank you. Uh, this is Dale Evans and Pat Brady. How do you do? do? How do you do? Delighted. <laughs> Taking a little sightseeing tour? Yes, we are. Well, I should really take an interest in our department. Were well, you looking for any special series? Oh, uh, yes. Yeah. Well, as a matter of fact, we were. We'd like to see a copy of the 8th Cent Statue of Liberty. Oh, certainly not right over here. No, no, no. We don't mean that one. We mean the one with the statue printed upside down. Uh, upside down? That's right. <laughs> I don't blame you. I'd like to see one of those myself. There's no such stamp, Mr. Brady. It doesn't exist. <laughs> Get the paper the book was wrapped in. See if there's a return address. Okay. Here's the book, Roy. Hmm. Six biographies of famous living Americans by Avery Wharton. There's an inscription inside. Mm-hmm. Dear Mr. Rogers, please accept the first edition of my book. You will find your own biography beginning on page 12. Find Avery Wharton. Here's the wrapping paper, Roy. The return address is Avery Wharton, Wharton Manor, 415 Elm Street, Georgetown. Georgetown? Hey, ain't that the hoity-toity section where all them mule-tie millionaires live? It's a very fine suburb of Washington, Pat. Pat, uh, give me the phone book, please. Phone book? Okay. What are you going to do, Roy? Well, these two inverted liberty stamps were on a package mailed by this Mr. Wharton. Rightfully, it, it seems to me that the stamps belong to him. Belong to him? Oh, Roy. Oh, why do they belong to him? He mailed the package to you. You got as much right to him as he has. All right, I... Pat. Don't get excited. You got the phone book? Yeah, here it is. Hmm. You must have an unlisted number. He's not in the phone book. Okay, let's go. Go? Where? To 415 Elm Street in Georgetown. We can't talk to Mr. Wharton on the phone, so it looks like we'll have to pay him a visit. <laughs> Good 
down, Mr. Rogers, Miss Evans, Miss Brady. This is a great pleasure. Thank you, sir. I'm glad you caught me at home. I seldom am, you know. I hardly expected that my little book would gain me a personal audience with you. I, I don't mind telling you I enjoyed working on your biography more than anyone else in the book. You've had a fabulous life, Rogers, just fabulous. Well, it has been interesting. Yes, that's the key to a happy life, Rogers. Not money or prestige or position or power, just interest. Things to be interested in. Things you can get excited about. That's why I write books for a hobby and collect stamps. Oh, you're a stamp collector? I have one of the finest collections in the world. I see. Well, uh, do you happen to have two copies of a, an eight-cent Liberty stamp with a statue upside down? Upside down? Oh, 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 oh nonsense, Mr. Rogers. <laughs> no such error was ever made. Well, there may not be a record of it, Mr. Warden, but take a look at these. Hmm? Oh, heavens, it is. It's an inverted Liberty. Mr. Rogers, where did you get these? They were used as postage on a book you sent me. Postage? Oh, but that's impossible. Yeah, they'd have never noticed it if I hadn't seen it. You see, I'm a file tattoo. Or a file ladle uh, uh, Excuse me. Nancy! Yes, Uncle Come here a moment, please. If my memory serves me, the book was mailed by my niece. Perhaps she can tell yes, it. Yes, Uncle Avery. Oh, I didn't know you had visitors. Mr. Rogers, isn't it? Gail Evans and Pat Brady. Well, this is a surprise. How do you do? How do you do? Uh, Nancy. Yes? Do you remember my giving you a copy of my book to mail to Mr. Rogers? Well, yes. It was yesterday, wasn't it? I took it with me on my date with Joe. Oh, my goodness. Well, what is it, Miss Wharton? Oh, Uncle, I'm terribly sorry. I forgot all about it. I must have left it in Joe's car. You mean to say you didn't mail it? Well, we went to the country club, and you know how Joe is. He doesn't like that swank crowd. He always says he feels out of place. Yes, 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 yes. So you left the package in his car. Well, I must have. Now, this is important, Nancy. Try to remember. Did you put stamps on the package before you went to the club? Stamps? Oh, well, as a matter of fact, no. I never bother with stamps when I'm with Joe. He's a guard in the government printing department, Mr. Rogers. He buys stamps by the book, and whenever I have any mail, I... Nancy, please stop chattering and pay attention. Are you absolutely positive that Joel put the stamps on the package? Oh, you mean Joel mailed the package? Yes, ma'am. He used these for postage. Two eight-cent stamps. What's so surprising about that? The book probably... Never mind. You can run along now. I'm sorry about forgetting to mail the package, Uncle. I guess everybody's right. Since Joel and I became engaged, I'm just kind of off on cloud nine somewhere. I'd like you to meet him, Miss Evans. He's really a wonderful man. Of course, he isn't rich, and he wouldn't ask me for a long time. You know how it is with men. Cloudy. He said everyone would say he was marrying me for my... All right, all right, Nancy. These people are not interested in hearing your life story. On the contrary, Mr. Wharton. I know how Nancy feels. And I'm so glad you found your future husband, Miss Wharton. And we hope you'll be very happy. Thank you. Well, nice to have met all of you. See you later, Uncle. Bye. 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 Well, Mr. Rogers, this begins to make a little sense. Does it? Although how that scatterbrained young idiot could have made a mistake like this, I'll never know. I don't think I follow you, Mr. Warden. What exactly happened? Well, it's perfectly obvious that Joel Potter came into possession of two of the greatest rarities in stamp annals. And then the young fool accidentally used them as posters. I can't understand that he's a guide in the printing bureau. His father is a government printer. He makes stamps. He'd know the value. Joel of... Potter's father prints stamps? Yes, he... Oh. Oh, I think I'm beginning to understand. So do I, Mr. Warden. I think this is a matter for the Treasury Department. Mr. Rogers. Yes, sir? These, uh, these inverted liberties, they, they've been canceled, so they're of, uh, of no further use to anyone except the collectors. I suppose they're yours by right of possession. I'm not sure, Mr. Warden. Uh, it depends on what the Treasury men say. They may be government property. Oh, not since what would the government want with them? Why not sell them to me? I can't do that, Mr. Wharton. Not until I've had a talk. Mr. Rogers, I'll give you $50,000 apiece for them. $100,000. Gee, Dale, it's no fun going sightseeing without Roy. I know, Cap. But Roy went to see the treasury men. 
Tell me if you're in a capital building as soon as he's through. Have you got your guidebook with you? Huh? Oh, yeah, here it is. How high does it say the Capitol Dome is? Capitol Dome. Capitol Dome. Just a second now, look it up. Mm. Yeah, here it is. Capitol Dome. 288 feet high. Oh, certainly is a magnificent spot. The dome of the Capitol is unusual in several respects. It contains extraordinary acoustical. Or, um, acoustical. Or... <laughs> acoustical. Yeah, acoustical property. Standing directly under the dome itself, it is possible to hear even the slightest whisper of a person many feet away in the other part of the foyer. <laughs> foyer. <laughs> foyer. You suppose that's so, Dale? It must be, Pat, if it says so. Hey, Dale. Yeah? How come Roy didn't want to sell those inverted liberty stamps to Mr. Wharton? Well, in the first place, Roy isn't sure they belong to him. And in the second place, suppose they're forgery. Forgery? Sure. Stamp collecting is a big business, Pat. What if someone has deliberately forged the stamp and made it look like a genuine heir? He could get a fortune for it. Yeah, $50,000 of stamp. They're not forgery. Roy says they ain't forgery. What? I said Roy says they ain't... I could have sworn I heard Roy say something. Yeah, that's what I thought. Roy! Where are you? Oh, where? There he is, Pat. On the other side of the room. Come on. Well, what do you know? Whispering clear on the other side of the room and... Hey, Roy, the book is right. You sure were a cow sackle. <laughs> Did you hear me whispering? It's just like you were standing right next to it. That's a remarkable effect, isn't it? Oh, it sure is spooky. What did the treasury man have to say? The stamps are genuine. They were printed in the government office. The question is, why wasn't the error reported, and how did they get into Joel Potter's hands? You mean, if a mistake is made in a stamp, it has to be reported? Immediately, Pat. And in most cases, the stamp or stamps are destroyed. So what now? Well, the treasury men are starting an investigation. They'll probably call Joel Potter and his father in for questioning. His father? Uh, yes. Joel Potter's father was in charge of the machine that made the error in the stamp. I see. Poor Nancy. I hope Joel doesn't get into trouble on account of this. He's in trouble right now, Dale. Plenty of trouble. What time did the treasury man say he'd call, Roy? About six o'clock. I told him we'd be back here at the hotel by then. It's almost six now. Look. Jumping catfish, would you look at this room? Somebody's going to keep it. Yeah. Whoever it was might have saved themselves a lot of trouble. I took the stamps with me. Oh. What's that? Well, sounds like somebody in the closet. Oh, uh, Mr. Wharton. Uh, you sound hurt, boy. Mr. Uh, Wharton. Mr. Wharton, are you uh, all right? Uh, well, oh, Miss Heaven, Mr. Rogers. Don't try to sit up. Hey, that's a nasty bump you have on your head. What happened? Uh, I decided to call on you. Renew my offer for the stamps. I knocked on the door. A voice said, come in, naturally. I... Ooh. Hey, take it easy. Well, I, I thought it was you, of course, so I opened the door and came in. That's all I remember. You must have surprised whoever was searching the room, Roy. Yeah. Well, that's probably Mr. McDougal, the treasure man. I'll get it. Get Mr. Wharton a cold towel for his head, Pat. Okay. Hello? Yes. Really? I see. Yeah, sure. I'll go there right away. Yes, I have the stamp. What's the address again? 1229J Street, room 217. Okay, sure. I understand. I'll see what I can find out. Bye. What is it, Roy? The Treasury Department thinks that old man Potter printed more of these inverted liberties. They want me to see what I can find out. I'm going over there now. It's Roy Rogers, Mr. Potter. Uh, may I come in? Roy Rogers, uh, can I see you for a minute? Why, why yes, sir, I guess so. Come in. Thank you. Hey, looks like you and I had the same visitor. Huh? Your room, it's been ransacked. 
Oh, yes, I found it this way when I came home from work today. Burglars? Well, yes, I, I suppose so. What were they looking for, Mr. Potter? Well, I, I really don't know. I'm not a rich man. I don't keep any large amounts of money in my room. I really can't say that to the time. Oh, would it be some more copies of these, Mr. Potter? Oh. Perfect liberty. Another two copies. Where did you get them? Mr. Potter, the important question is, where did you get them? I printed them by mistake. By mistake? Are you sure? Yes, yes, I swear. It, it was a mistake. Well, why didn't you report it like you were supposed to? Well, I... Can you see, Mr. Rogers? I have a son. Yes, I know. You do? You know Joe? I've never met him, but... Well, I've heard about him. He's engaged to Nancy Wharton, isn't he? Well, yes. Yeah. That's why... That's why I decided to keep the stamps and, and sell them. I wanted him to be able to stand on his own with Nancy. He was going to call off the marriage because he said he couldn't afford her and he wouldn't live off of her money. But Nancy loved him. She was willing to live on what he meant. That's what she says now. But Joel didn't believe her. And then when the mistake occurred in the printing press and I saw the inverted statue, I realized that I had a fortune in my hand. I put them in my pocket. I corrected the mistake in the machine and, well, I, I didn't report the error. I see. But... How did your son get two of them? My son? Yes. He used them for postage on a package that I received. Postage? Oh, no. How could he have gotten them, Mr. Potter? Well, we live here together, my son and I, and I suppose he had something to mail, and he just looked in my pocket and found them. He often does that. I carry stamps with me all the time. You mean to say you just put the inverted liberties in your coat pocket and left them there? Well, they were as safe in my pocket as anywhere, Mr. Rogers. I didn't want to attract attention to myself by putting them into a vault or trying to hide them. Well, that is, not until I discovered that two of them were missing. And then you hid the others? Yes. Where? In, in the back of that picture frame over there. Okay, Mr. Potter. I'll get them. Then we'll go down to the Treasury Department and explain what happened. I don't think you will, Mr. Rogers. What? Just stand where you are, both of you. Mr. Warden, what are you doing here? I came to get the stamps, Mr. Rogers. I'm not stupid, you know. I'm aware that Joel's father, Prince Stamps, and I heard Nancy's story, I knew that Joel probably got the stamps by accident from his father. I reasoned that there were more than two copies. The presses can't be stopped that fast. I want all the copies, Mr. Rogers, all of them. I'm going to own the greatest philatelic rarity in the world. That's why I searched this apartment in your room. Fortunately, I didn't look behind the picture frame, and you had your copies with you. But you said that you were... I know, I know. You surprised me by returning too soon. So I hit myself over the head and went into the closet. Now, Mr. Rogers, if you kindly take that cord from the curtains and tie Mr. Potter up. But, Mr. Warden... Do as I say. I'm going to have those stamps and no one is going to be the wiser. Now, get the cord. Okay. Don't get itchy with that gun. You don't want a killing on your hands, do you? Oh, certainly not, Mr. Rogers. All I want are the stamps, and I'm going to have them. Once I've got them, no one will ever see them again. No one will be able to prove that they even exist. They'll be hidden safely away where no one will find them. Now hurry with that great record, Mr. Rogers, and stop stalling. Mr. Warden, you're a, you're a millionaire. Why, why are you doing this? You don't understand, do you? No, I don't suppose you would. No one but a stamp collector could understand. Do you remember, Mr. Rogers, I spoke of interest? Well, stamps are mine. I love them. They're my very life. They're like a fine set of areas to a violinist. But no one will ever see them if you steal them like this and hide them away. That's not important, Mr. Rogers. The important thing is that I will own them. I will own the only copies of the greatest stamp in the world. I see. Okay, Mr. Wharton. I guess I can understand how you feel. It's too bad, but you leave me no other source except... Uh, 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 Grab his gun, Mr. Potter. Okay, Mr. Wharton. Just hold still and you won't get hurt. <laughs> You know, Mr. Rogers, this is the first time I ever saw anyone make a laugh do out of a drapery cord. Well, there it is, Pat. This is where the government makes all of our money. Wow. Would you look at all that beautiful green lettuce? <laughs> Roy? Yes? What will happen to Mr. Wharton and Mr. Potter? 
I don't know about Mr. Potterdale. That's up to the Treasury Department. Mr. Wharton's case on attempted theft comes up for trial next week. The jury will decide what happens to him. What? Yes, sir. What is it? That one dollar bill that just came off the press. What about it? Well, look. Don't you see? So it's Washington's head. It's going backwards. And, folks, that's the story of an incident that happened to us in the capital city of the nation, Washington, D.C. <laughs> Take a liking to you. See you next week. This is the United States Armed Forces Radio and Television Service.